you doing? So it's actually, I think it's like 10.30 or something for me. And I gotta tell you, I am definitely a morning person. Gotta have those cups of coffee in the morning, get started, get ready for this. But I'm gonna do my best to catch you up on what I saw today. And uh, first off, since, uh, since we're in Taiwan, just uh, just celebrated a good Chinese New Year dinner with, uh, with family. Uh, Olivia's mom is here and uh, had dinner with her, so that was pretty cool. Uh, we'll start with what is going on with this virus. So, turns out that it is more contagious, they're saying, than SARS, but actually less harmful. Uh, in addition to that, something that's very different, everything I've read since uh, SARS, is they are being very, very aggressive with quarantining, essentially shutting down cities, which... Um, read a couple articles just about the city itself being shut down, Hunan, I think, and uh, people are basically fighting for supplies, doctors aren't showing up for work because they're, you know, afraid of catching it, and just, just some really bad stuff. Uh, the last thing is it seems to have a seven-day incubation period, so hopefully the worst is only a week to ten days ahead of us because they've, they've started to really clamp down, so we should see well, you know, what's what here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, next, oh, in addition to that, it looks like Disney. Disney took massive steps and uh, shut down its uh, Shanghai Park, which I thought just goes to show you how serious they are, uh, especially given it's, you know, Chinese New Year and the like, very family gathering and oriented. So the fact that uh, they went ahead and shut that down, I think it's a big deal. Uh, on to more pleasant news, pleasant information. Uh, looks like Intel came out with a bang up report uh, this morning, right before the market opened, and uh, should be posting uh, stock growth or higher prices this morning, would be my guess. Again, I look at that and I just say more proof that the consumer is doing well. Uh, you know, also read into it, looks like the business, you know, capital investment may be improving as well, but probably too early to tell. Again, looking at Intel's announcement is just more signs to me that the consumer is going to be fine in 2020. Uh, next up, did you see this? Looks like uh, Mr. Peanut from Planters. I don't know if you know who that is, but essentially he's the character with the cane and the top hat. Apparently they killed him off. Uh, he's 104 years old, and apparently he, uh, he fell to his death. Uh, but my guess is there's going to be a surprise at the Super Bowl and uh, he is going to be magically resurrected. You can't, uh, you can't let Mr. Peanut go, right? 104 years old? Come on. That, that'd, be, that'd be not good. Uh, next up, did you see that 23andMe, uh, the DNA testing um, company, had to slash 14% of its workforce? Looks like it may have seen peak demand, not this Christmas, but the Christmas before. And uh, apparently, according to the CEO, excuse me, uh, the drop uh, came unexpectedly. Uh, not, not paying attention, I'm guessing. Uh, next up, looks like there's a lot less talk about these unicorn stocks. They're saying the era of the mega-funded startup who never makes money is behind us. They cited Uber and Lyft and WeWork, all the normal ones that you and I talk about. But they're basically saying companies like that, after what happened to WeWork, aren't going to be easily funded uh, which is a good thing. That's just that's just lighten capital on fire. Sure, the innovations could be great, um, but you got to turn a profit, right? I mean, come on. Uh, that's that's what the name of the game is. Uh, and then um, the biggest news of the day for me was an article I read about available homes for sale. Did you see this one? Apparently, available homes for sale are lowest ever. Now, ever is kind of a rough word because they've only been tracking since 1982. But still, since 1982, the U.S. has never had less homes for sale, which I think is, I think that's almost unbelievable, right? Because we probably have 10 million more homes, 5 million. I don't know what it is, but we got a lot more homes in 1982. So, uh, but that's what they're saying. Uh, looks like the supply would be exhausted in under 90 days. Looks like prices took a big jump in December. They went up 7.8%. Just, again, I keep telling you, right, 2020 is going to be bananas. Just to copy what Tom Ferry had to say, and I think he's right. 
uh, I think with record tight supply, interest rates are a point lower than they were last year this time. Millennials are aging into when they're going to be buying homes, right? They're buying later, but guess what? The time is now. We are going into an appreciating market. This feels very 2004 to me, except with lower interest rates. Something you might want to check out is I posted a video, I guess very early my time. It was like 4 a.m. my time, I think, uh, that talked about a house we bought, and it gives you the full history. You might want to check that out because it really gives you the prices. And the reason I bring that up is at the peak of the market we sold for 264, that same house today is probably 175. So there's still big room to run and interest rates are lower. They're two points lower than what we bought it at. So it just tells me that real estate can get a lot more expensive, um, which is saying something because uh, I think multifamily is overpriced. And if you don't know what I mean by that, check out a video I did here in the last few hours about multifamily. I give you three painful lessons learned, right? It's very, it's very rough to buy at the top of the market. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Peanut, that's guys, they, they got to do something at the Super Bowl. That's my guess. Uh, but Again, back to the uh, video this morning, right? Multifamily is richly priced. I think buying at the top is far more uh, risky than missing the bottom. And just look at the numbers, right? You're, you're going to see a duplex that was sold or bought for 300 that we bought for 42 after the crash. There's talk of a 10 unit, and 18 unit with same kind of numbers. And, and I, I had to do that video because so many people are either A, asking for multifamily for me. Hey, find me a fourplex, find me a duplex. Or B, calling me an idiot because they're just believing the last five years. If you've only been investing the last five years, I'm sorry, I got 20 years of experience doing this. I know exactly what the vibrations felt like the last time the market was getting pretty toppy. And multifamily is pretty toppy. Single family homes still have room to run. Look at that uh, video I put on the last 24 or 48 hours. It shows you exactly how much more time we have to run. Sorry, it's a little noisy, but uh, a lot of you wanted to see what's going on in Taiwan. So I'm, I'm talking on my balcony here. And I, if you can hear that, that's fireworks going off in the background because it's Chinese New Year. Can you hear that? Somebody give me a thumbs up or something. I don't know. I can hear it. It's really loud. But anyways, that's what I got for you today. Again, uh, I am a morning person. I'm doing my best to get this to you. And wow, that's getting loud. Somebody's blowing up a lot of fireworks. All right, everybody, take care. Have fun.